Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back to Beginner Church with Mrs. Lee. I'm so glad that you're able to come. I hope that you've learned a lot about the Easter story. I sure have, and I've had a lot of fun teaching it to you. I hope you've learned quite a bit. Well, let's start today by singing, Praise Him, Praise Him, All Ye Little Children. Let me hear you nice and loud, Timmy. Titus, let me hear you guys singing. Ethan, Seth, here we go. Praise Him, praise Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Praise Him, praise Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Oh, that was wonderful. Good job, Bray and Owen. Super job, Ethan. Let's sing thank him. Oh, we have so much to thank him for, don't we? Can you say something that you're thankful for? Let me hear you. Cash, Parker, can I hear you? Emily, Emma? Oh, that's great. We have so much to be thankful for. All right, let's do it. Thank him, thank him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Thank him, thank him. All ye little children, God is love, God is love. Well, thank you for singing with me, Ruby and Sophie, Olivia, that was beautiful. Jackson and Aiden, I hope you're singing with me. Well, let's review our eggs, our resurrection eggs. It's almost resurrection day. Sunday is coming, the day when Jesus rose from the dead. Let's see what we can do this evening. Would you like to count with me? Hey, let's try counting by twos. Can you do that? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Let's try that together. Ready? We'll do something different. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Parker, I'll bet you do that at school. That was wonderful. Owen, I'll bet you do it as well. Jade, I'll bet you do it also. All right, let's try it one more time. Two, four, six, eight. 8, 10, 12. Good job. All right. Very quickly, let's look at our eggs. What's in the pink one? Coins. Oh, coins that they paid Judas to tell them who Jesus was. Let's look in our orange egg. In the orange egg are praying hands. The praying hands, Jesus praying, asking God to help him have strength to do what needed to be done. And you remember the disciples, the helpers, they were sleeping. Oh yeah, we remember. How about the purple egg? Oh, the sword. The soldiers came with the swords to take Jesus away. And Peter took the sword. And what did he do? Chloe, Sophie, Johanna, what did he cut off? Knox, do you remember? How about Lily? He had cut off someone's ear, didn't he? But Jesus healed that ear. That's what the Bible tells us. How about the green egg? Oh, the green egg. The whip. The whip that they whipped Jesus with. They were so unkind to our Savior. The light yellow egg had the crown of thorns. Oh, I wish it could have been a crown with jewels. But no, it was a crown of thorns. Elias, you remember that? Yeah, Landon. Haley, you guys remember? Yes, that's so sad. Then, last night, we had the nails. We had the nails that they put in his hands and in his feet. Oh, how sad. Yes, they really tortured our Savior, didn't they? They tortured our Savior, and it was a terrible, terrible thing. And then we had our greenish egg. Remember that one? It had the dice in it that they gambled Jesus' clothes away with. Yes, they were torturing Jesus and so unkind to him, weren't they? Well, let's talk about the Bible. I love to talk about the Bible. This is God's word, isn't it? Our special, special book. The first part of the Bible is called the, everybody say it, Becca, Travis, can you say it? Bryce and Brindley, let me hear it. The Old Testament. The Old Testament. Finley, I'll bet you remembered that, didn't you? Jack, Riley, I'll bet you did. Now, the second part of our Bible is called the New Testament. That's where we find the story of Easter. That's where we find the story of Jesus coming down to earth. 
Sophie, did you remember that? Sophia, Annie, and Anna, do you remember that? The New Testament. Well, we find our Bible story, the Easter story, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All four Gospels. I think that's pretty amazing. So, our story begins tonight with a centurion. A centurion who was a soldier, a Roman soldier. And you remember yesterday we talked about that when Jesus actually died on the cross. When he died on the cross, the sky was dark. There was an earthquake. The earth was shaking. Can you shake like an earthquake? Oliver, good job. Ethan, good job. Well, there was an earthquake. Remember the, the veil in the temple was cut into, was rent, torn into, and that the graves were open and people came back from the dead who had been dead. The Bible tells us saints of old came back and people actually saw them. Well, there was a centurion there at the cross when Jesus died. And he said, truly, this was the Son of God. He believed that Jesus was God's Son. So even in Jesus' death, people were believing in him. People were realizing that he was the Son of God. What an amazing thing to, thing to think that a Roman soldier, a centurion, actually believed that Jesus was the Son of God. Well, let's look at our next egg. We have a purple egg. We have a purple egg. This egg has something very sharp in it. I need to be careful with it. It's a spear. It's a spear. Now the Roman soldiers carried spears. And when Jesus died and the thieves that died by him, when they died, they wanted to make sure that they were dead so that they could think about burying them. And you know what they usually did? They broke their legs. But they were dead. They didn't feel anything. But you know what? They did not break Jesus' legs. One of the soldiers took his spear and he put it in Jesus' side. He pierced Jesus' side. That's what the Bible says. Did you know that that was God keeping one of his promises? Did you know that in Psalms 34 it says that none of Jesus' bones would be broken? And did they break Jesus' bones? No, they broke the thieves' legs. They did not break any of Jesus' bones, just like the Bible said. They pierced his side with a sword. One of the soldiers did. Isn't that amazing to think that, that God's prophecy in the Old Testament truly was being fulfilled and we can see how that happened? Well, you know, when I think about the cross, I think about love. Do you? I think that a cross and a heart are equal. Jesus died on that cross because of his love for each one of you. Olivia, Travis, Ruby, Titus, because of his love for you. Marcus, Drake, and Cash, Brooklyn, and Aislinn, his love. Can you make a heart like that? I'll bet you can. His love made him go to the cross because of his love for you. Ray and Becca, isn't that a wonderful thought? I think that that is just a beautiful, beautiful thought. Well, our verse for tonight is John 3, 16, a verse I'm sure you're familiar with. I'll bet most of you know this verse. Finley, do you know it? Emma, I'll bet you know it. Lily, I'll bet you know it as well. Johanna, let's try and say it together. John 316. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Bryce and Brindley, that's why Jesus came. God sent his Son because of his love for every single one of you. Leo, because Jesus loves you. Annie, because Jesus loves you. Maddox and Joshua, because Jesus loves you. Jade and Briley, isn't that a wonderful thought? That makes Mrs. Lee so happy to think of. Well, 
Let's continue on with our eggs. Our next egg has something very special in it. It's almost the color of this egg, but it's very special. It wasn't dirty. It wasn't soiled. That means had been on the ground. They didn't get it. Like remember the, the rags basically that Jesus was wrapped in when he was born. He didn't have beautiful new blankets, did he? Well, guess what? When Jesus died, the Bible says that there was a beautiful, a fine linen cloth. They wanted one of the best things they could find for Jesus. They loved him so much. And a man named Joseph had some beautiful cloth. And they took that beautiful cloth and they took Jesus off the cross and they very lovingly wrapped him in this beautiful fine linen. That's what the Bible calls it. Fine linen. And they put spices in to help preserve his body. And they wrapped him oh so lovingly in that fine cloth. And then they took him to be buried. You know, they wanted to show Jesus that they loved him even though he was dead. They still wanted to let him know how special he was. I'm so glad they didn't use an old dirty rag. I'm so glad that they had something special for our Savior. Isn't that a wonderful thought? I think that is such a sweet, sweet thought. Silas, what do you think? David, isn't that nice? Amethyst, do you have some beautiful cloth at your house? I'll bet you do. And they could have wrapped Jesus in that Adora and Hananiah. Yes, what a wonderful thing. Well, let's do on the cross. Can you put your pointers up? Here we go with our pointers. Let's do the verses that we've learned so far. Everybody have them up? Everybody have them? Charlie? Harper? Are you ready? Alex? Here we go. Marcus? Ready? On the cross. On the cross. They put Jesus on the cross. Make your tomb. In the tomb. In the tomb. They put Jesus in the tomb. How many days was he in the tomb? Can you count it out for me, Bryce and Brindley? One, two, three. Three days. Titus, good job. Here we go. Three long days. Three long days. In the tomb for three long days. Oh, that was great. Olivia Ruby, what a good job. All right, and then we had rolled away. Get your tomb again and let's get our, our rock, our stone, ready? Rolled away, rolled away. They found the stone was rolled away. Now, what do you think they're going to find when they, when they go in and see that the stone is rolled away? Empty tomb, empty tomb. They came and found an empty tomb. Can you believe it? Let's try that together. Are you ready? Empty tomb. Empty tomb. They came and found an empty tomb. They did find an empty tomb, didn't they? Jesus was not going to stay dead. Jesus was going to rise from the dead. That is exactly right. Well, I have a little something fun to show you. One more little thing. All right, this is my little celebration stick. I took a little bit of, okay, when I was growing up, we called these pipe cleaners. Now they call them Chanel sticks. So I took some little Chanel sticks and I made a little cross and I made a little heart and connected them together with a little bit of glue. And I took a little bit of a, a ribbon and tied it on there to make it look like a little celebration and stuck it in a straw so that I could wave this whenever I wanted to praise the Lord and think about all that he has done for us. All right, well, maybe you can make one of those. Have mom and dad send me a picture if you make any of the little crafts that we had this week for Easter, just for fun. All right, well, thank you for doing such a good job tonight. Let's sing Jesus Wants Everybody Happy, shall we? All right, got your big smile on? Here we go. 
Jesus wants everybody happy, happy. Jesus wants everybody glad. Jesus wants everybody happy, happy, happy. And he doesn't want anybody sad. Are you ready? Drake, you ready? Cash, Seth, Timmy, Titus, Silas, Lena. But Satan wants everybody grumpy, grumpy. Satan wants everybody sad. Satan wants everybody grumpy, grumpy, grumpy. And he doesn't want anybody glad. Aiden and Jackson, are you ready? Alex, you ready? Here we go. But Jesus wants everybody happy, happy. Jesus wants everybody glad. Jesus wants everybody happy, happy, happy. And he doesn't want anybody sad. Well, Mrs. Lee doesn't want you to be sad either. I hope that you will remember all the wonderful things that Jesus has done for us and how much he loves you. And have a little celebration about Easter. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank you for coming, boys and girls. Bye-bye.